And now, the 250th episode of The Steve Katzos Show. Honestly, I can't believe we made it this far. Stevie! Hey! Hey, Mike, I'm here with Lenny Clark. He's a legend here in Boston. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, Lenny. I, I just, I, we got a problem. Our announcer, Bob Kuhn, uh, is in Australia, not here tonight. Australia? Yeah. These volunteers are driving me crazy. Oh, yeah. What are we gonna do? We, we need to find a, a new announcer who can step in and wear the right clothes and, and be the... You know. What do you think about this, Lenny? Make Mike the announcer. Make Mike the announcer? Easy. Great job, Lenny! All right, go ahead, Mike. You're the on announcer. It. I got this. That's fantastic. Right, hey, Steve! Hey, Steve. hey, hey Lucas. Lucas. Yeah. How are you, pal? Oh, my God. I just realized something. Now what? that Mike is announcing, right. who's going to be the supervising producer? Who has the skills to produce, that has produced before, that can do this? I, I don't, Lenny, what do you think? Lucas can produce. Lucas, the producer. You're back. Okay, go. Great job, Lenny. Oh, no. I really feel nervous about tonight. It's a special episode. I, who's gonna host the show tonight, Lenny? Will you do it? Snap out of it. 250 <laughs> shows, no one's better than you. You host the oh, show. Thank Steve. you, Lenny. Get out I'm gonna it. host the show. I love this. I love this show. <laughs> my name is Steve Katzos, and it's my dream to help creative people get their art out to the world. That's why. My friends and I have been developing this late night talk show from New England. To date, our program has aired in 15 countries, all with a budget of zero dollars. That's right, we're volunteers and we use the power of freedom of speech to create international television shows from a small public studio. And if we can do this, then you can do anything you want to do. Follow your dreams. We've reached 250 episodes, and he still hasn't paid for the first 125. <laughs> Here he is, your host and mine, Steve Katzo! and welcome to our late night talk show from New England. I'm Steve Katzos and we are excited because tonight is our 250th episode! <laughs> what do you think about this, Dad? I want 500! 500, that's ambitious, Dad. I know you're always pushing me, but that's crazy. You know, tonight marks the 10 year anniversary of when we started helping creative people. And I want to thank my entire family for supporting me and all these volunteers. How about it? <laughs> and uh, speaking of volunteers, one of the best ones I got, he's tonight's special announcer for our 250th show. It's Mike Katrobus! <laughs> Hi, Steve. So glad that I've uh, had done every job on the show except for yours. <laughs> well, uh, you know, thanks, Mike, but you could have my job, but if you do, that means you have to pay for all the food, the swag, and the props, and I don't think you want to do that. Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. Well, listen, you, you've done a great job as producer this season. I thank you, and I want to announce that on April 29th in Hudson, New Hampshire, Mike will be performing stand-up comedy at our special show to raise money for the Friends of Benson Park. How about that, everybody? Yeah. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited, Steve, and I hope my jokes go over better than they did for your crowd earlier tonight. Hey, <laughs> just a quick note. We want to thank LA36 in Los Angeles for showing the Steve Katzo Show. Wow! <laughs> yes! And thank you, Scott Trumbo. You know, tonight, uh, like right now, the ninth season of the Steve Katzo Show has begun in L.A., so that's fantastic. And that means as of tomorrow morning, that's when I'll be getting the hate mail. Uh, honestly, Steve, I I I'm pretty sure you won't have to worry about any of the hate mail since, well, no one in L.A. will be watching the show anyways. Uh, well, look, I mean, they did put you up against The Tonight Show, The Late Show, Conan, Kimmel. 
Well, I mean, but even if they didn't, I don't think anyone would watch anyways, except the guy Norm. You have one fan in L.A., Norm. Yes, Norm watches and he chimes in on the webcast all the time. How about that? We got... We love Norm. We got one fan in Los Angeles. You know what? I think worldwide, I might have about seven fans. Isn't that pretty good? Right? About seven. Yeah. Folks, in the back control room, please put your hands together for our live producer tonight. It's Hopra! Yeah! Hi, Steve. Just want to mention that our entire crew is on their best behavior tonight because they don't want you yelling at them at the crew meeting after the show. <laughs> <laughs> and we're happy to tell everyone that tonight we have our very first SKS producer, Locke, is here with us. Oh, there he is! <laughs> Stevie. Locus. Steve. Locus. Steve. Locus. Steve. Locus. Steve. All right, enough, you guys. Um, I need to stop you guys. I know you have your own humor, but none of us get it. Um, and I don't want people to leave. That's primarily yeah. the reason. Well, I don't want them to leave either. Yeah. Sorry about that. I just want to announce also that tonight we have filling in on keyboards, Dutchman. Dutchman, Dutchman there he is. There he is. Oh. Always love having people sit in with the house band. Thank you, Hopra. Folks, in case you didn't know that, every week we do have live and original music, and here they are. It's Tony in the SKS house band. Steve Katzel Show is produced by volunteers, most of whom don't have a real job. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Well, it's time for today's first guest. Now, she's Boston's beloved radio voice. Please welcome back to the show, Candy O'Terry! <laughs> back to the show. We're so happy that you came out for our 250th episode. Right, everybody? I have a present for you. A present? What is it? For Greek Easter. Oh, your very own you. little Cadbury oh, cream egg. Fantastic. You can give that to Sophie if you don't want to eat. Yeah, thank you. I guess you must have got that 50% <laughs> off. <laughs> they were on sale this week, so I brought them. The, the Catholic you Easter's know. over, but no, thank you. And I, I have to mention now that I am vegan, so I can't eat that, so that'll go to my daughter. When she, when she's, here, you hold on to that, Dad. Okay. Candy, I, I want to mention, uh, you know, thanks for coming, first of all. You've been yep. helping me over the last few years, and I thank you for that. Uh, but you spent 25 years on Magic 106.7 FM in Boston. Magic 106.7. And anybody uh, living in Boston at that time knows your name and they know your voice. And you originally were hired as uh, the secretary to the program That's director. True story. Yes. Uh, so, how did you get on the air? Well, it's actually a very funny story. I'd love to tell you about it. So, uh, when you're the secretary to the program director, you're privy to a lot of information. We had a disc jockey with a terrible habit of falling asleep on the radio. Oh. And so, my boss said, listen, if he falls asleep one more time, we're going to have to let him go. And that night, he fell asleep for the third time on the radio. Oh. It was a Friday night in the summertime at 4 o'clock when he fired him. And wow. he had nobody to put on the air that night. So, he came into my little cubicle and he said, you're on tonight. And I said, oh, no, 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 don't make me do that. And I'd been to broadcasting school, but I'd never been live on the radio before. Yeah. He said, you'll be great. He put me on the air that night. I spent the next 25 years on the air. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 
funny that you mentioned that uh, the DJ fell asleep on the air. Sometimes my band leader falls asleep. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just kidding, Tony. You're the, you're the greatest. We love Tony here. How about this, everybody? You know, Tony's been here you know, for a good uh, nine years at least. He came halfway through season one, and he's he's always brought the band here. Oh, really? He's prettier, though. My dad says uh, Candy's prettier than Tony, right, everybody? Yeah. I think. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, at 106.7, yes. you created a radio show called Exceptional Women. Yeah. And before we get there, you also had another thing called Boston Life. And the best episode ever was when you had a Greek boy yes. from Arlington on the show. Right, everybody? You were amazing. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, you were a great interview. Well, All you, you have to do is ask a couple questions and then just roll tape and let them take it away, right? Yeah, well, sometimes yeah. I talk a lot, but not always. <laughs> uh, but Exceptional Women, that was yeah. the, uh, the most successful show produced by and for women on the radio in the United States. Yeah. You know what? I always tell people when they ask me about that show that it was what I was most proud of in my career. Mm -hmm. Over those 23 years that we did the show, we interviewed 600 women from every walk of life. Yeah. And I just love having giving women a chance to tell their story about how they got to where they are today. Mm -hmm. And there is no shortage of exceptional women. I mean, some of them are famous, and some of them are like backyard heroes. I mean, they're your mother, your sister, your best friend, people doing things in a humble, quiet way. It was a great concept, and I'm very proud of that show. Yeah. Thank you. You had a story about Mariah Carey. You were oh talking my about God! What okay. happened with her? So I finally land this interview with Mariah Carey because she's coming to Boston, and this is in like, I want to say 2002 or something like that. And um, so she was staying at the Four Seasons. So I wanted to do something that would be memorable when I interviewed her. I wanted to make a good impression. Mm -hmm. So I went to Winston's and I got her one long stem white rose for every one of her number one songs and one for good luck. So I had 16 long stem roses in this great big box and I asked them to put this big diva bow on the outside of it. Show up at the Four Seasons and you know all these other jocks you know on in the morning like Maddie in the morning. They're trying to steal my box of roses and I'm like listen <laughs> get your hands off my roses right I go upstairs it's finally my turn to interview her and her bodyguard was as big as that couch yeah. I mean he was just massive but I went in there and she literally painstakingly took my roses out of the box put them in a vase talking to me the whole time telling me stories that you just would not believe mm. she was so real she was four hours late for our interview. So <laughs> she is a little bit of a diva in that way. I guess well. she was taking a nap. But once I got to her, she was great. She yeah. was great. That's awesome. Four hours, that's, that's real right there. <laughs> um, she was worth it. You're the president and co-founder of Boston Women in Media and Entertainment. Yes. First of all, who's your co-founder and why did you guys decide to put this group together? Well, this woman has more vowels in her name than you could possibly imagine. Her name is Dela Arabella Santori, mm -hmm. okay? She's just a powerhouse. She's like what I call an event architect here in Boston, New York, wherever. She just puts these great events together. And she's kind of like the marketing part of us, and I'm the programming part of us. Mm -hmm. Basically, we created this organization because it's really hard to get your start in media and entertainment, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, I know. Right? I'm still trying I mean, to get here my we start. are, 250 <laughs> episodes. It's hard work, right? And so we wanted to create a community of women who could help each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what Boston Women in Media and Entertainment is all yeah, about. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> You've done so much and so many things in media here in Boston, yeah. so we have a lot more to talk about. We're going to be right back with Candy O'Terry right after this. Yay! For more information about the Steve Katzos Show, go to stevekatzos.com. And don't worry, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Everybody. Boy, I'm These still guys. here with Good. Candy O'Terry. She's Boston's beloved radio voice, and we love her, right, everybody? Yeah. Now, Candy, I want to mention a couple things. One is we came across a very young broadcaster who came on the show. Her name was Pavlina Osta. Oh, and, yes. And we found out that you were her mentor. So I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you, um, do you mentor other people, and how did you get into that? Boy, I tell you, I'm a huge believer in passing it on. Mm -hmm. There was somebody who, very early in my career, a guy named Jack Connors, who ran Hill Holiday, Connors Cosmopolis, huge advertising agency in mm -hmm. Boston. And he's a BC guy, and I'm a Boston College person, and he agreed to see me and give me some advice about getting into broadcast. 
And he told me, I want you to make sure you pass it on. If anyone ever asks you for your help someday, you need to make sure you do that. And ever since that day, I have never been without at least two or three women I've mentored per year for my entire career. Wow. Yeah, Pavlina's really something. She's yeah. going to be a superstar. Yeah, I always call her the next yeah. Oprah. I, I was just about to say that. Yeah, she's... But we, she could never be Oprah, though. Yeah, yeah. Never. We've got Oprah, but yeah. I think <laughs> Pavlina might be the next Oprah. She's fantastic. Uh, done a lot of things at a young yeah. age. Um, you know, you had mentioned B.C., and I didn't know this, that you came up to B.C. to swim, and That's you right. still swim today. I do. I do. I swim 5,000 yards a week. Whoa. Yeah. Because I don't want to have a fat butt. That's why. <laughs> yeah. And, but I, I love to swim, and I also teach children how to swim. I'm a fully certified water safety instructor and a lifeguard. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Little, you know. little known fact. My wife and I are teaching our daughter how to swim, so maybe we'll have to oh, check out your classes. I could do some private lessons with little Sophie. Yeah. You, you are also doing something else in the world of media. Uh, you now work for Br Bruner Communications. What are you doing there? So I've taken these broadcast skills that very often we take for granted. You know, the ability to speak well in front of a crowd, the mm -hmm. ability to moderate a panel, to do a keynote address, to use your voice as I have as a singer. And I teach executives who may very well know what their product is or or their service but that doesn't mean they can express themselves mm -hmm. so Liz Bruner who's a very well-known television person here in mm -hmm. Boston asked me to join her I work for her company now called Bruner Communications that's, that's good. we travel all across the country yeah teaching uh, people how to talk yeah that's that's a very important <laughs> thing to learn uh, you had mentioned now that you are a singer and we yeah. know that you've had albums come out sure uh, we got our daughter your album dream come true and you autographed it for yeah, her thank Thank you. And you've done some other things too. Sure. Um, when do you get to perform your music? You know what? I just recently had a chance to record a song from the uh, from the play Wicked mm -hmm. with a woman named Cherie Dunwell, who was the grand champion of community auditions. Yep. We recorded this gorgeous song and we performed it recently at the at uh, the State Room in Boston. Mm -hmm. And we're raising money for a charity called the Jet Foundation. So with every download of my song For Good, mm -hmm. the money goes directly to the Jet Foundation. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Now, this is uh, great to have you here on television, but you also, I mean, all these things you do, you also do television. This is great. Um, you you uh, work on the show Community Auditions. Yes, I did seven seasons. Star of the day, yeah, yeah. who will it be? Yeah. Oh, come on, you guys know that. <laughs> well, don't pretend you don't know well, that. It's been around forever, and you are a judge, and I wanted to ask you <laughs> this. As you judge other musicians, okay, I would be horrified at that. How did you deal with it? Well, first of all, I had no problem with it at all because there, as, you know, I felt like sometimes I was like Simon Cowell, you know, did someone tell you that you could sing? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was it was a great experience. I did it for seven years. I have a funny story. Mm -hmm. So this girl comes on the show. She comes from Nantucket and she's about 15, 16 years old and she had flip flops on mm -hmm. and kind of this like long kind of flowy dress and her hair was like hanging down in her face and she's strumming her guitar and her head's down like this and she's singing this song that nobody's ever heard of mm -hmm. and I didn't think she's very good so I gave her a six and her name was Megan Trainer. Oh. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she went on she to improved. Very successful, yeah. Well, she, as in winning a Grammy Award, right? Yeah. And you know what? That's why I would never like to judge anyone, because that's what would happen to me. Folks, we're so glad she came in tonight to our 250th episode. If you want to Thank find you. out more, candyoterry.com. Thank you so much for coming, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Candy O'Terry! Congratulations! All right. We'll be right back right after this. New England deserves its very own professional late-night talk show on national television. Until that time, you get this. Welcome back, everybody. Well, it's time for today's comedian. Please welcome to the show, Lenny Clark! Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. What a band! What a band! Fantastic! Are they great? I tell you, oh my shower, I'm telling you, 250 shows, Connie. 
Lou, mom and dad who show up every show, and the wife, that's great. My parents never, you know, today kids say, well, dad, will you come to my game? You know, they all go to your game. You got to go to the games. When I was like, my father didn't go to any my games. No, dad, are you going to come to my game? I could see my, hey, dad, are you going to come to my game? He goes, what? Are you going to come to my game? He goes, yeah, why don't I do that? Why don't I just quit my job and go to your little game? Where is it? Maine. Maine? Now I got to take the day off? No, my father never went to any of my games. My parents, my parents used to beat me. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if you, no, I know, I know, because you're much better than I, because you are a veteran. And a, a Purple Heart, awarded the Purple Heart. Yeah, yeah, all right, Lou. Oh my God, I have so much respect. For veterans because I, I didn't go. I didn't go. I went to the Cape because, <laughs> well, it was during the draft and the draft, you know, if you got drafted like one up to 130, you got to go. I was 286. I could only go if we were invaded by Mars. So I said, <laughs> I'm going to go to the Cape. I'll be in Falmouth if you need me. But I'm glad I didn't go and I'll tell you why. What's the first thing they taught you, Lou? How to make your bed, right? How to make your bed. What the hell are you gonna make it a bed for? You're going to defend the country. You're not gonna make a bed. Oh, we can't fight today, Russia. The beds are a mess. Come back next week, right? <laughs> well, what's the next thing they teach you? How to march? Everyone's marching around. We're all mar Why are you marching? You're not gonna be marching. You're gonna be fighting. People are gonna be shooting at you. You're not gonna be marching. You're gonna be running. And then you're gonna get exhausted. You're gonna turn around and kill whoever's shooting at you, and then go back and take a nap. What the hell? The beds are already made. But. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, my parents, all oh, my parents used to beat the hell out of my day, my One day, my father was kicking the crap out of me. The cops pull up and said, hey, use this nightstick. You'll hurt your hand. Now, <laughs> and my mom, oh, my God. I mean, my mom, you know, we, I come from a big family, eight kids in my family, you know. We were all born and brought up in the housing projects. A lot of people call them condominiums now, but you're not going to kid me again, you know. And my mother and father, if they weren't having sex, they were cooking. And there was a lot of cooking going on. Eight kids, a lot of... But anyway, I went to touch something on the stove, and my mother hit me with a cast iron pan. Bang! Knocked me out cold. I'm lying, I woke up, she's standing over, and go, look what you made me do. I said, oh, Ma, I'm sorry I did that. I'll never do that again. As soon as I, these cartoon animals stop flying around my head, I'll sit down and write you an apology message. Method, using the Palmer method. But anyway, you know, what I, I said, thank you. That's, you know, some of you, you're so young, you know, because I'm old now. I'm old. But I'm so happy to be here. 250 shows. I remember show three, they said it wasn't going to make it. And look, 250 shows, only 250 more to go. And I'm very excited for you. You're the Johnny Carson of Public Access TV. <laughs> You really are. You're the best. And what you do for so many people, you've helped so many people. I've got so many calls from Bulgaria asking me if I could come and perform there. You know? And I would go if I knew where it was. But, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed in the weather right now. We're already, I, I don't know if, is this live? So it's April, you know, and we're still having lousy weather. Oh, where's all the global warming we were promised, huh? I'm a little bit disappointed in that. Because they said global warming is the biggest problem facing us in our immediate future. Are you out of your mind? We had a storm a couple weeks ago. It wasn't bad. But we had a storm a month and a half ago called a cyclone bomb. Remember that? A cyclone bomb! We're having a cyclone bomb! Forget the kids. Screw them. Save yourself. <laughs> Run for your lives. Get a cyclone bomb. Oh, my good God almighty. How many people were killed in that cyclone bomb? How many people were hurt? It's a snowstorm, for God's sakes. Come on. <laughs> And the big thing is around here, well, there's no place to put the snow. Yeah, there is. Throw it in the ocean. You can't throw snow in the ocean. Why? Because of all the salt and the sand. I said, what the hell you think is in the ocean? <laughs> Listen, I'm so happy to be here, and I'm so happy I could spend some time with your folks and your beautiful wife and kids. And I got to tell you, there isn't a better guy than Steve Katzos and his band. Right, Steve Katzos, everybody. Thank you, Lenny. All right, we'll be right back with him right after this. <laughs> Artists, comedians, musicians, they all come here to the Steve Katzos Show. Honestly, I have no idea why. <laughs> wow. Welcome wow. back, everybody. I'm now joined by today's comedian. You just saw him on our show. He's Lenny Clark. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome, Lenny. Great to be here. What an audience. What a band. My good God. Yes. My... Yeah. And originally from Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, right? I saw you. 
with the blue notes. Where? Uh, Hampton Beach Casino. Yeah, that's been a while. Yeah, <laughs> well, of course, but you know, at least you're an original member. I went to see the Beach Boys. They're not black, right? No. 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 <laughs> I'm telling you. Hey! I'm big with the kids. <laughs> Lenny, the first thing I want to mention before we get into our interview is that you've been on our show before. We had a great interview uh, several years ago. Then you came down to Regent Theater and you helped us raise $10,000 for Dana Farber. Oh, okay. So we appreciate that and the fact that you wanted to come tonight on our 250th show and do comedy in our little studio. That's fantastic. Thank you, Lenny. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And, and I want to mention this because sometimes comedians come on here and they go to other places. You've already been to those places. But then after you were on our show, you were on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon in 2015, and it was awesome, right, everybody? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. And I, and I made sure the next day I told everyone that you were on my show. That's right. And now you're on The Tonight Show. But I, I did your show first. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but I, I know that um, earlier you had been on Fallon's late, late night show, right, and you right. had a great relationship with him, and he yeah. became The Tonight Show host. You, you were brought right on. He was. Well, I was his uncle in the movie Fever Pitch. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How about Kyle. that, everybody? And he, yeah, 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 to get the meeting, yeah. I love Fever Pitch because it's about the Red Sox. Yep. Um, but I have some other things I wanted to talk to you about that we didn't get into last time. Okay. Number one, it's great to be a comedian and be well known, but to have something named after you is fantastic. And you have a, have an ice rink named after you. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, and there it is, Lenny oh Clark God. Ice Arena. Oh yeah. my God! Oh. Yeah, I, I, someone said to him, did, "Did Lenny die?" And he said, "No." Yeah. But when he died, that's Dennis Leary's house. Yeah. And, he's got, and he's got a beautiful, uh, like a big estate down in Connecticut. Yeah. I only get to go there when I have a bag on my head. And there, there's the rink. Yeah, you the see rink. the rink, and it's gorgeous. I mean, he's got a zamboni. And someone said, well, "Why'd you name after Lenny? Did he die?" She says, "No." But when he does die, no one's gonna name anything after him. Yeah. <laughs> now, I have to mention that the team down there is the Ice Holes. Yep. They had their own team, and they actually played at Fenway Park, and you uh, were named the head coach, and yes. there you are with the team. Yes, I and, was. And uh, yeah. I was told by the guys that your claim to fame is that you, uh, you pulled the goalie in the first period. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I, I, I thought it was a good move. We ended up winning. <laughs> we ended up winning, and I also sent out Charlie Jacobs to fight Dave Schultz from the Philadelphia, uh, you know, Flyers, and and uh, he got he got beat up pretty bad. But hey, you know, I never got free tickets to a Bruins game. What do I care? Yeah. <laughs> now. Um I was working, because uh, I work in sports television, and I was at the 2013 World Series when the Red Sox won. I was so excited. I ran onto the field. I was standing near uh, Big Poppy. But when I went by home plate, you were like in the front row with your brother. Yes. What do you guys have, front row seats to everything? Well, uh, you know what? It was, uh, it, it, John Henry had called me up and said, Lenny, would you like to go to the game tonight? And I was in Chicago that morning. I said, I'm on my way. So I, <laughs> I said, pack your bags. We're going. And she said, am I going to the game? I said, no, you're not going to the game. Mike's going to the game. So we went to the game, and we ended up sitting. Dennis, Dennis Leary, he was getting great seats. He was with Fox. He was up in a booth, and he said, you're not going to believe my seats. I said, really? You got a TV? He said, yeah. Look behind the home plate. He goes, you son of a... Gun. And what happened? Uh, yeah, it was John Henry's been very, very good to me. Yeah, the Red Sox have been great to me. Yeah, Bob Kraft's been good to me. Speaking about being great to people, you. Wick Rosebrick's been good to me. <laughs> but, but this, you, you're, you're a comedy legend here in Boston. Uh, when stand up stood out, the film is fantastic. It's all about some of your escapades when you were younger. Oh, yeah. But the comedians now, they always say the same thing. You treat them great, you support them. Uh, you're fantastic. They love you. And I wanted to tell you that when you came the first night here, it was such a fantastic night. Everyone had a blast. Last, you know, Tony's shaking his head. He said it was great, and we want you That's to know funny. that since tonight we begin, we, oh, yeah. you know, when tonight when we begin our tenth season now, and we have a special uh, something that we want to give you. Now, uh, it's an award that we put together, and uh, it's also um, presidential because I know that uh, watching your comedy over the years, sometimes you lean to the right, oh, yeah. and that you'd be happy with the president that we asked to come give you this award tonight. And here he is, folks. Put your hands together for Donald Trump! Oh. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. President. How are you? Hello, Donald. I see you brought some stuff. I did. I brought some things. 
<laughs> Lenny, you're looking great. Thank you, Mr. You're President. You too. I was going to bring Milani with me tonight, but things between us are a little stormy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny Clark. I mean, what do we say about Lenny? Let's just let's talk about Dennis Leary though first. <laughs> I call him Disaster Dennis. He should have been here tonight, but he's not. He's hiding somewhere in L.A. <laughs> L.A. That disgusting cesspit full of degenerates <laughs> like Dennis Leary. <laughs> rescue Me was a good show, but quite frankly, we need to rescue Dennis's career. We do, okay? <laughs> Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Disaster. Horrible show. <laughs> Terrible show. But we're here tonight to honor Lenny Clark. He's a beautiful guy, and we want to give him an award that... Steve, I think it's tremendous that you put together here, Quinn. Uh, thank you for bringing it here. It's... So, Lenny Clark. Lenny Clark, this guy, this handsome guy. The Steve Katzo Show presents Guest of the Decade. Whoa. To Boston oh. comedy legend, Lenny Clark. Put your hands oh. together for him. Oh. Yes! <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah. Love you, Thanks, President Trump, for coming back. It's Thank great to so see much. you. How about it, everybody? President Trump, here he is. <laughs> Donald Trump, I'm so glad, you know. We spent all those years trying to get President Obama. He didn't come, but at least he called my house. But, you know, Trump comes. He comes, and so. Oh, he comes a lot. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> But there you go. We wanted to let you know it's a presidential award because oh it was brought God. to you by a president, and you are the guest of the decade. How about it, everybody? Wow. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. This is, without a doubt, the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> <And Alan too. laughs> yes. I just hope that you don't throw it out no, on no. the way home. No, 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 no. I still have my Steve Katzos mug. Yeah. You know? so I want another one, so now... You'll get another one, trust right, me. I want another. Hey, we're so happy that you came today. How about everybody? Lenny Clark! Yes! Thank you. All right. Thank awesome you. stuff. We Thank appreciate it so, so much. much. All, right. All right, we'll be right back right after this. The Steve Katzos Show is produced in front of a live studio audience. Most of them owe Steve a favor. Welcome back, everybody. Well, it's time for today's musical guest. Now, 10 years ago, he was our first musical guest ever. Please welcome back to the show, Air Traffic Controller. All we can do is live in what time we're giving. Only so much to spend. Yes, peach day, whatever makes you smile. And some days can be a go, go, go days. But don't you think that it's okay when it's worth your while? All we can do is live in what time we're giving, and no one really knows. All we is left to go childhood not everybody had it so good if we could do it over some wood how far would you go and who would you be you couldn't choose another family but all your friends and your surroundings they're under your control Those who never had the guidance, they are the most afraid. And there is evil around defenseless people. And now the gentle and the feeble can never find their way. Stunted at a job you never wanted. Every now and then you're haunted, makes you want to cry. If you hadn't been grounded, 
could have failed until you found it and then finally amounted to somebody you like we all die we hardly ever get to say bye become an angel in the big sky if you paid your dues i wish i knew when it was coming if there was some kind of warning we would do only what's important with the ones we choose yeah all we can do is living what time we're giving not everyone survives all we can do is living what time we're giving to go on to still alive All we can do is live in what time we're giving before you reach the end. If you want to learn more about the Steve Kassel Show, then you should see a doctor immediately. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with tonight's musical guest. He is Dave Monroe, and he goes by Air Traffic Controller, and we love him, right, everybody? Fantastic music, as always. Now, 10 years ago, this week, you were here on the night when we brought Yuri Barringer and Chad Parento and did our first episode. It was me and a curtain and a few uh, close friends that some of them are still here today, like Hope and Lacus and my dad and, and JB. Uh, you know, so, so you were here, we were here, and here we are 10 years later. I haven't made a penny with the show, but at least your career is blossoming. <laughs> it, it's, I'm, I'm inspired by you, so I owe, I owe you big time. Ah, no, you don't owe me nothing. I'll pay. <laughs> Now, your, your band has changed over the last 10 years. Uh, you know, it, it changed some members. You're always there, of course. And uh, I want to mention that my wife and I made it up to see you play a few times in Harvard Square. And we always had a fantastic time. It was great music and a lot of fun. And uh, you, you are Beatles influenced. I have to mention that because, of course, I grew up on the Beatles. Uh, but I noticed recently, like walking through Best Buy, music comes on and it's your stuff. You're on in like big department stores and stuff. Yeah. Um... Was it, was it the video you saw, the Bose video, or were you just hearing it? No, I'm hearing it. I'm walking oh. through the mall and stuff, and I hear your stuff, and you're everywhere. Yeah. Do you get paid for that? I think Macy's might owe me money then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I mentioned I thought I heard it in Macy's. <laughs> um, you've won some awards over the years, uh, Boston Music Awards, New England Music Awards, and most re recently you won something else. What was it? The uh, Independent Music Awards. Yeah. <laughs> That happens in New York, but it's, a, it's like a worldwide uh, award that goes to independent uh, bands, and, and uh, it was a huge honor. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a huge honor for us to have you here tonight. We love Air Traffic Control, and we'll be ma back with more with him right after this. For a copy of tonight's program, just go online and steal one, like everybody else. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Well... Here's his latest album, it's called Echo Papa, and there he is, it's Air Traffic Controller. <laughs> ooh, ooh. I was walking up the driveway, sliding through the door. Everybody's looking my way. Don't know what for Like I'm not supposed to be here I don't know the code You can't choose where you come from Only where you go Lights are all on and the music is loud Everyone raise a fist, everyone shout Police are here and they're kicking us out They're kicking us out How'd we end up at the after party? Did a show up at the wrong address? Oh, we're part of the drunk majority We're just another uninvited guest In the morning it's a different story When everybody's cleaning up the mess I don't believe in the after party I don't believe in it, can't believe it Some started a bonfire Some went to the show Some headed for the border 
to be left alone oh, looking out at the chaos with a crooked grin you gotta pay off the pit boss in the state we're in party is over we're stuck on the couch i say it's bullshit but i'm not allowed authorities here and they're kicking us out they're kicking us out i'll be at the bed the after party did a show up at the wrong address we are part of the drunk majority just another uninvited guest in the morning it's a different story when everybody's cleaning up the mess i don't believe in the after party i don't believe in it what the hell just happened did we burn it down can we still throw a party when there ain't no house? Lights are all on and the music is loud. Everyone raise a fist, everyone shout. Authorities here and they're kicking us out. They're kicking us out. How do we end up at the after party? Did a show up at the wrong address? Are we a part of the drunk majority? We're just another uninvited guest. In the morning it's a different story. When everybody's cleaning up the mess I don't believe in the after party I don't believe in it Can't believe it I can't believe it Thank you for watching the Steve Katzos show. Honestly, I can't believe you stayed until the end. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you for joining us for our 250th show. Tonight's guests were Boston's beloved radio voice, Candy O'Terry. Tonight's comedian was Lenny Clark. There he is in the photograph with Trump. How about it? Tonight's musical guest, air traffic controller. Tonight's volunteer of the night is John Mullins, JB. Where is he? We're waiting for him. Here, is he. here he goes. Where is he? Get him out here quickly. Let's go. We'll wait. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're an artist, we ask that you continue to give your gift to society. This show from Arlington, Massachusetts is our gift to you. Tonight's live producer, Hope Orfanos. Tonight's live director, Tom Giannini. Tonight's live sound, Mike Brennan. Tonight's live video, Lucas Gradwall. And our supervising producer, Mike Kotrobis. There he is. Tonight's music is Tony and the SKF House Band. The House Band. Well, that's the end of our show. Hopefully I won't see you next time because you'll have something better to do. <laughs> I'm Bob Coon. Goodbye.